What's up, Previews World? It is Wednesday. It's New Comic Book Day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Tori Jeffrey Allen. I'm your other host, Ashton Greenwood, a.k.a. the Duchess of Free Comic Book Day. Uh, speaking of Free Comic Book Day, okay. okay, I was out last week. Yes. We skipped the we show. We both were, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we skipped last week. I was in Dallas for our retailer summit yeah. doing some important fact-finding about Free Comic Book okay. Day. Okay, interesting. So we wrangled up a bunch of retailers, uh, as many as wanted to come hang out with us. Okay. And I have no clue what the number was, but it, it was a sizable amount. Mm -hmm. um, and we got them all in a room, and we asked them to tell us what works for Free Comic Book Day, what doesn't, how can we support their event, mm -hmm. what can we provide in the way of like promotional items, digital graphics, social media graphics, uh, what, what kinds of titles would they like to see, do they want more all ages, do they want more teen? So it was it was really insightful. They had a lot of good feedback. Good, good, good. And I feel like we got a lot out of that. All right, cool. Now I heard it was kind of a hit actually. I heard yeah, that it the was. People were actually, I, I, you know, the retailers always want to feel involved in mm -hmm. the promotional process for them. So that's always really nice. Um, I don't, I, you know, for those of you who aren't aware, the retailer summit is when all the comic shops yeah. come together. Like, a, is it like I want to say it's once a year, but I feel like we've done it twice a year before. It's once a year. It's once a year. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, come to Giver once a year at a mm -hmm. specific location, and there's, you know, it's a summit, so you know, there's food, of course, but okay. like, there's also workshops and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and stuff like Ashton talking to the retailers about what they need from Free Comic Book Day. So, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. we'll see some changes implemented for next year. That'd be cool. Right? I hope so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, we have some comments already. Already, damn. Damn, y'all are quick. <laughs> uh, Fat Tony saying Let's go. good afternoon and happy new Comic mm -hmm. Book Day. Looking forward to the penultimate show today. To which no. I responded, I said that we're actually pushing back our final yes. show to the 28th of this month because yes. of the fact that we were out last week. Right, because last week was kind of unexpected. <laughs> we didn't account for any of it. <laughs> and, and no one wants to end a show on like episode 239. No. So yeah. If we did forward. that, I would I would never, ever be able to let that go. I would take that rage to my grave. 239? <laughs> Ashton would just come in here live stream by herself <laughs> like, right. episode 240, the Ashton show. <laughs> All Ashton all the time. <laughs> uh, so what else in the Hey everyone, kind of glad about the late, late start. I needed a couple minutes myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we need we a couple minutes too. So several okay. minutes. He's <laughs> racing here. over here. He's saying hello everyone. Hey, Ubaldo. What's up? Anton is saying about John Romita Sr. Mm. He was a Spider-Man artist. I remember he's a tr he's terrific and yeah. he'll be sad the rest. Yeah, that's another one. It's uh, We're gonna talk about that later in the show. Of course, it's the thumbnail this week. Um, but actually, you know what, speaking of Spider-Man, yeah. Without spoiling it, because Johnny has not seen it, mm -hmm. but we both saw Spider Verse. Yeah. I'm actually impressed with the the timeliness of you seeing this. So I know. That me was too. impressive. I was like, wow, you saw this already? That's pretty good. Okay. So, off the break, mm -hmm. what is your initial reaction? Oh, I loved it. You loved it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good. Good. I loved it too. I thought it was very well done, very well executed. I, you know, it's. I don't want to call it yet. I'm a mm. this on the third film. Okay. Right, but it's becoming my. Favorite of the Spider-Man movies. Ooh, I can yeah, I can you get know? behind that. And um, you know, it's one of those things where it's without making Peter Parker the center focus of the mm -hmm. story, it's doing a lot of service for Peter Parker. Yeah, which I think is kind of interesting. So, and it does a good job of balancing the things you expect from a Spider-Man story while also making yeah. it new. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's a, there's actually a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's a big part of, point of it. Uh, Maybe a little too long. Oh, I didn't think so. You didn't think so? No, okay. I didn't. I didn't realize, and I realized after the fact this kind of had been shared on social media that it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting that. Mm -hmm. So it kind of ended to me abruptly. I was not in right, a bad yeah, way, yeah, but like yeah. it wasn't too long for me because I wasn't aware we were approaching, we were approaching the, end. the end. Right. Yeah. Well, no. I, so the same thing happened to me where I. I knew that they had they were making two and three back to back, right? Yeah. I knew that that was something that was definitely going to happen. I don't think I necessarily understood specifically that there was going to be one at the a cliffhanger at the end. Right. And so, sorry, Johnny. That's one thing. At least you're prepared now. But I mean, that seems to be kind of a point that others have also said. Also we're said hardly that. the first ones to say. We're hardly the first ones to say. But um, you know, I was in the same boat where mm -hmm. there are parts of the movie that I felt were like could have been a little shorter, but. By the time we were approaching ultimately mm -hmm. the cliffhanger, right? Yeah. I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, so you know they're gonna go back and they're gonna save him, blah blah blah, you know. And I'm yeah. like, all right, so okay, we're we're you know we're gonna get to the big finale soon. Yeah. And then it was like to be continued. I was like, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those. Yeah. Um, did you see Fast Ten? 
No, I desperately want to see Vastan. Okay. Can, <laughs> can I spoil one thing for you? Please. The most unearned, I mean, I mean it's fast 10. It's fast 10, Is right? any of it earned? Right, so I mean, let's be very clear about that. But I, we should really talk about this when you see this because it ends on a cliffhanger and I hate it. I hate it so much. Right. <laughs> it, it, and it's, it's, it's not out of line for the rest of the series, but it's just sort of like, really? My toxic trait is endlessly defending the Fast franchise, I, even though it doesn't deserve I, it. You know, and I look, I, I'm with you on that. Like, I, <laughs> I have this, I've developed a love-hate thing with it. It went from like, I just love these because they're stupid. Yeah. And I like car stuff in general, right? And it kind of transitioned into, all right, Vin Diesel, you need to chill out. <laughs> You need to chill out. Like, so. a, a ending on a trilogy is wild. That is wildly well, see, narcissistic. <laughs> wildly narcissistic. So, that, okay, we're not going to dwell on Fast X too much, but I did not, so, without spoiling anything, I did find out after the fact that it's going to be a trilogy of, of oh, one really? big finale. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that was also sort of like, <laughs> how, how dare you? How dare you, sir? Sit down. And of course the movie ends with produced by Vin Diesel. I was like, this is too much. He's out of control. He is. Anyway, I won't, I, any more, but we will powwow about this afterwards, either on the show or oh, like, yeah. off the show. Oh, yeah, we didn't even get to Spider-Punk, who. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, they, he got out of his Spider-Man costume, and I had a moment where I was like, <laughs> do I have a crush on an animated character? <laughs> Apparently you're not alone. <laughs> Apparently you're very much not alone. And I've seen a lot of stuff about Spider-Punk in the last couple of months, a couple of weeks, and I'm like, I see. Okay, interesting, interesting, so. I will come next week prepared with a report on Spider-Punk fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, jeez, I didn't even think about that. Oh man, and Gwen Stacy's part of that too. Wow, <laughs> all right, okay, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Anyway. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm curious what's out there, I am. Real quick, a couple more comments before we get to new comics this week. Mm -hmm. um, Anton is saying, very excited about the second part for mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Yeah. My friend didn't know that it was a two-parter. And the second part comes the day before my birthday. There you go, perfect. Nice. Happy birthday to him. Is there, okay, I didn't even know there was already a release date for it, but I guess they, they already. March? Did they say a date? They said at the, at is the it end, March? it's March 2024. Oh, okay. All right, so we're getting ahead of, uh, ahead of summer. All right, interesting. Huh. And Ubaldo Unless saying, Tom Cruise tells him to move. Ubaldo agrees he completely <laughs> hates the ending of Fast Town. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I mean, it's, I don't, I hate it, but I don't hate it. Okay. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. But they do something that's just sort of like, nobody's buying this. Like, like what are we doing? Anyway, I'm going to let it go because I really don't want to spoil it. And I want your genuine reaction to I'm going to try really hard to see it by next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. How and I mean, times is the word Luda. family used in Fast X? That's what I really. Yo, think. that's a drinking game. You could that be is. dead by that the end. Is. That's absolutely true. You have to write about that. Fantastic, <laughs> hilarious. Um, let's dive into picks this week because we are already late with this show this week. So Ashton and I have our picks, and we're going to show you mm -hmm. also what's available at your comic shop this week. So let's jump into it. We'll hang time on that one. I don't know what that. <laughs> want to build the anticipation. <laughs> there you go. Build the anticipation for our picks this week. Um, I do not remember who went last, so you want to go first? Let's go with Ashton first. Okay. Okay, great. I'm pretty excited about my pick this week. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have found a new subgenre of a genre that I love, which is post-apocalyptic, but now we've doubled down on it and made it post-apocalyptic horror. Okay. Which I'm all, all right. about. All right. So my pick is Haunt You to the End number one from Image Comics. Oh, that looks freaky. Uh, writing by Jack Cady, art by Andrea Muti, and colors from Micah Zozo. Mm -hmm. um, first things first, I will be seeing this cover in my nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have, um, I think we've talked about this before, but like my young horror movie trauma experience was The Ring. The Ring. Yeah, it gives me Ring vibes. Yes. Yeah, it, does. <laughs> it definitely does. I can't remember the character's name. But Samara. Yes. Yeah, Samara. I'll take that one to my grave too. That will never not haunt me. <laughs> that's how you know it's real. When you know exactly who the character yep. is. Like, yes, that's, that's like up there with Pennywise. Like, yep. yes, not interested. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Um, so that was honestly part of what got my attention, was like, hmm, how can I relive my childhood trauma through this comic book? <laughs> right. So um, it's set in a future where climate change has pretty much destroyed the Earth, and mm -hmm. everyone's living on Earth in these, like, 
astronaut suits, basically, oh, because okay, the well. air is unsafe to breathe. Uh -huh. um, and so it, for whatever reason, uh, this eccentric billionaire, and the keyword is eccentric, because why would you choose to use your money to go ghost hunting when the planet's falling apart? Interesting. But okay. I guess that's, you uh -huh. know, on pace uh -huh. for a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, they just, he decides to put together like a ragtag group of all your weirdos, right? Like the disgraced journalist, the weirdo doctor who's probably been uh, not disbarred, whatever the equivalent is for medical malpractice. <laughs> the medical malpractice doctor, he's right, in there. Yeah. TV demonologist, also very uh, important. Okay. And um, this actually sounds fun already. <laughs> right. <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. And a bunch of like um, military contractors. I know there's a word for that. Uh, but, okay. Uh -huh. uh, so they Fodder. all. Yeah. <laughs> Militia, that's the uh, word. Mm -hmm. um, they all get together to go investigate what they called in the synopsis the most haunted place in America. Okay. And when I looked at the preview pages for this book, which are on Previews World, by the way, um, the Cecil Hotel is uh, the setting for this. Okay, interesting. Which, if you've seen The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel on yeah, Netflix, yeah. is the creepiest yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, Wait, I'm, hold on. That's the place in Los Angeles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, on scare, about. like, the next block over from Skid Row. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. I know exactly what you're talking about, yep. So, that got under my skin in a weird way, just huh. from watching the documentary. So, I figured, why not couple that with something that seems traumatic and read it as a comic book? <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, like, actually super excited for this, right, even yeah. though it seems like a uh, trauma traumatizing experience. Right. I mean, that sounds interesting. That's like, that's an interesting, <laughs> you said, you said post-apocalyptic horror and I was like, yeah. oh, that's not that out of the norm. But like, that is kind of like a doubling down of things, right? right? Like, it's really layered, that story. Okay, interesting. All right, that, I'm curious too now. I kind of want to check that out. Interesting. Haunt you to the end, number one. Uh, yeah. Ghostbusters meets Mad Max meets... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know American the Horror ring. Story was it American Horror Story season <laughs> yeah. six, whatever it was, where they did the the version of the Cecil Hotel. Um, my pick this week is a book called Zeno uh, mm -hmm. from Oni Press. Uh, this is cool because I, you know, I, so I feel like there's a progression for people who read superhero books, right? Okay. Like you kind of come in with superhero comics, and eventually, if you hang around the comic book thing long enough, you're gonna just transition to just hard sci-fi. Yeah. Like that's kind of like the progression. And I've been on that progression for like 10 years now. Like, you know, it's gone from superheroes mm -hmm. to, you know, Vertigo to 2000 mm -hmm. AD. And now we're hearing something like Xeno, which is a sci-fi anthology book by some mm -hmm. really talented people. Um, so the way that this is being described is because the future is getting weirder every day, we give you yeah. Xeno, number 001, the first of three oversized 40 page Ooh intraocular lozenges of subversive mm. surrealist science fiction to cure your awful awareness of it all. Love that. <laughs> right, right. Um, so this is coming from uh, Matt Lu Les Lesniewski, which mm -hmm. is easy to spell but not easy to say. Um, <laughs> okay. Who actually did an interview with. He has a very unique style, and that's actually him on the cover. Okay. Um, and Phil Hester, uh, as well as Jordan Thomas and a couple of others. Shaky Kane's also on this list. Uh, it's kind of like a collection of largely indie artists, but they're doing mm -hmm. science fiction. And so I don't even know what quite to expect from this, mm -hmm. but I really love the idea of like an oversized 40 page book yeah. that comes out every single month and it's just a collection of sci-fi. It does um, feel like 2000 AD all over again. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Or even heavy metal. I mean, mm -hmm. that's also the, another one, part of that progression from superhero comics, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it just looks cool, sounds cool, and I have been, I'm just very curious about this. And I think the upcoming issue is going to have uh, David Lapham, who does uh, Stray Bullets. Mm -hmm. um, who's mostly known for Stray Bullets, but has done, done a ton of other stuff on top of that. Um, and a couple others involved. So, yeah. Like I said, not quite sure what to expect from it, but I'm here for the ride. And it looks like cool artwork, so. There was, um, well, I have two things I want to say here. One, there's a, a section in the solicit that I noticed you didn't say about, like, the uh, insertion process won't. Oh, painful. did I miss it? I'm, I might have just glossed over it. I that. caught that in the synopsis and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yes, the insertion process will be guided by the megawatt yeah. brilliance of Oni's <laughs> brightest talents, past, present, and future, as they slowly tune your dreams, mm. your hopes, dreams, desires, paranoia, alienation, anxiety, and adrenaline to Perfect. produce the desired result. This, I mean, it's just... That you, tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> so many, so many uh, solicits, uh, you know, I'll be real with you, so many solicits are very cut and dry. Yeah. Like, you know, and I can always appreciate a really imaginative solicit because mm -hmm. it tells me that the book is probably really imaginative too, right? right? So just food for thought when you're reading, go through the previous catalog. Sometimes 
it just comes down to like that's a really way that's a really fun way to describe that book yes. <laughs> so count me in uh that is Zeno number mm -hmm. one that's in comic shops today and like I said 40 pages three parts that's crazy you know, mix it up do something different pick up something new go for it oh he's been trying a bunch of new stuff lately they have too. actually yeah absolutely so I'm all for, all, all in for that one Couple comments real quick. Yeah. We have Fat Tony actually saying, picked up Xeno number one this week and looking nice. forward to reading it. Okay, I want cool. no parts of Haunt You to the End. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame you. <laughs> Can't Nothing wrong with you. that. That's quite all right. I really <laughs> sat here and was like, this book is traumatic. You yeah, should read it. You should it. read it. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes, I mean, look, it's like, you know, I know sometimes people are like, I need, I want to read something that makes me cry. Sometimes you just want to read something that makes you like look over your shoulder as you're yeah. reading it. You well, I literally did that to myself on the way here. I was like, let me listen to the duel of the fates and then was crying on the beltway. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting emotional response to duel of the fates. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not surprised, but still. Uh, any more comments, Johnny? Yeah, Anton is saying, have you been reading the new Planet of the Apes series from Marvel? Nope, don't it's, like monkeys. It's awesome. And Fat Tony actually says he agrees about Planet of the Apes. Okay. I mean, I'm, I assumed it was actually pretty good. So Monkeys good and monkey adjacent gorillas, what's all the, them. What's the They yeah. make me nervous. Really interesting. Too yeah, human-like. The movies are, the new movies are really good. I'm sure they're great. <laughs> it makes like, me nervous. Well, <laughs> that's just like not interested. Forget it. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Anything else, Johnny? Nope. Okay, cool, cool. Um, this week, uh, of course, your local comic shop is home to not just comics, although there's plenty of that, uh, but also toys. So we're going to kick it over to Natasha, and she's going to show you what's available in the toy section of your local comic shop. Check this out. Natasha here to give you a look inside the previous toy chest. Let's find out what's available at comic shops for the week of June 14th, 2023. Want to see more? Then check out my show, DST Unboxed, where I show you what awesome new collectibles are on their way to your local comic shop. Check it out at youtube.com slash collectdst. As for me, I'll see you back here next week. All right, and of course, that's what's available at your local comic shop. There is tons more, of course. Head on over to previewsworld.com slash new releases and just explore. I mean, that's kind mm -hmm. of the beauty of that catalog and the website as well, is that you can just fall right into it. It's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. Um, so much so that like when I'm going through the social media stuff, um, and I'm doing the catalog, just the catalog items every month, mm -hmm. I, it's always a tangent. It's yeah, always oh like, God, yes. oh, when does so and so start doing this? Like, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of that as well. Um, I also want to point out Clobber in Time mm -hmm. is available this week. I'm a big fan of that book. Uh, I talked yeah, about this a few weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks mm -hmm. ago before. Uh, just, it's a book about the thing and uh, a time bandit, I guess you want to say, <laughs> right. who has no nose. I remember that, <laughs> <Right>. yup. <Yep. laughs> and him just encountering various, like, bizarre corners of the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's absolutely perfect for that reason. It's just the type of stuff that I would have mm -hmm. loved, like, uh, as a kid and I love now, so. All right, let's dive into the news. Oof. Yeah, I know. This is going to be a heady one. I mean, you know, we had fun. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. We had a good run. <laughs> but this one's got a, yeah, this is going to take a quite a few turns. So hold on to your butts. It's time for the news. Okay, it's probably worth pointing out that Johnny rightfully refrained from doing a sound this week because the news is, it's heavy this it's week, heavy all this of week. them. There's a lot, of, yeah, all the items are heavy this I feel week. like it just starts and gets worse the longer we talk. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first up, Marvel dropped its lawsuits against writer Larry Lieber and the estates of Don Heck, Gene Colan, and Don Rico. Mm -hmm. um, they 
will be moving forward with their legal proceedings against the estate of Steve, Steve Ditko. Interesting. Uh, so for some background on what's going on here, Marvel sued all five of these creators and their estates in 2021 after they filed copyright termination notices on the work they either created or co-created for Marvel. Uh, and so that includes characters like Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, Ant-Man, and Doctor Strange. So a lot of heavy hitters, okay. a lot of big name characters. Um, and so these various works and questions were created in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Mm. And the creators were attempting to reclaim their copyright mm. on those works since they were original creations at the time. Mm. Marvel, however, claimed that because the work was done for hire. Right. Same, old, same old song and dance. <laughs> right. That the creators couldn't claim any right to those characters. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it seems to have gone gone well for those four creators. It's also worth mentioning they settled a similar suit with Jack Kirby's yes, estate in 2013. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I always kind of feel like with these things, uh, the copyright claim, right, mm -hmm. is really just to get better compensation. Sure. I'm sure like a lot of these estates recognize, and not always, but a lot of these states will recognize that these things don't have the same value the minute you remove them from the Marvel Universe, right? right? Um, I, like, and there's a little bit of something like that with the Schuster uh, estate for Superman at one point in time, mm -hmm. uh, to the point that like a few times they've kind of just reconfigured Superman's powers to kind mm. of reflect the stuff that came after his initial creation, I guess is a way right. to put it. Um, interesting that they didn't back off on Ditko, though. I know. Yeah, that's that kind of feels personal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I don't know what that's about. Like, I'm curious to see where that goes. But yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I'm glad they settled, though. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's in the interest of the fans, and I think mm -hmm. that's in the interest of the creators as well, which is nice to know. Um, you know, and speaking of which, <laughs> take it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> speaking of Spider Man, yeah. uh -huh. uh, John Romita Senior passed yeah. uh, last week. Uh, at the age of 93, mm -hmm. which incredible, great, great run, great yeah. life run. Mm -hmm. um, so, his, so his son, John Romita Jr., who's also a living legend in the comic book industry, mm -hmm. had reported that his father passed. He posted on social media, and he did say that his father passed peacefully in his sleep, which mm -hmm. is great. That's kind of always what you want to yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, Romita Sr. has many a claim to fame, including yes. Spider-Man, um, but Perhaps his most well-known is that he co-created MJ, Wolverine, and The Punisher. Yeah, uh -huh. right, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like maybe the character he loved the most was always Daredevil. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I, that I'm not too familiar with. I don't even know if he's actually done Daredevil, to be honest. I mean, I don't know what, what kind of input he had on that book at one point in time. Actually, I guess he did do Daredevil for a while, for a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, Ramita Sr., I think is really interesting. It's kind of like a almost mm -hmm. a counterpoint to what we're going to talk about next, which mm -hmm. is like here's someone who managed to segue from being a work for hire artist mm -hmm. into becoming an art director for Marvel for decades, mm -hmm. and so it really was a career for him. That's not to say it's not a career for artists, of sure. course, but like he had transitioned this job into like something with benefits, <laughs> like you right. know what I mean, like an actual like office job, uh, which is kind of like I guess always the goal. Uh, which I've always thought was probably one of the more impressive things about him, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, the f earliest when I was younger, um, I definitely came into Spider-Man in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when I decided to backtrack and read some of the older stuff to kind of get caught mm -hmm. up, I kind of started with John Romita. Okay. Um, and so, like, there's in particular a uh, two-parter uh, that's kind of like this... Uh, Green Goblin story, mm -hmm. it, it always stuck with me, like, you know, as a kid, because I was like, this is classic Spider-Man, like, it's just got yeah. it's got all the hallmarks of it, um, and so, so much so that, like, during the pandemic, I went and back and bought those two, that two-part story. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so, like, I got, like, a little something from the 60s, it had to be affordable, though, so, mm. it's a little ragged, but it's okay, I just wanted the old school uh, Spider-Man comic, but yeah, like, I've always found, uh, like, yeah, Ramita's stuff, uh, to me, is kind of quintessential Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people are like, no, it's Ditko. Dick goes quintessential Spider-Man. Mm, nerds and are always gonna. They're always gonna do that, right? Um, but I think, I think to me, the thing that uh, he brought to Spider-Man, which I think a lot of people have said, this, but this isn't like anything groundbreaking. But he was doing romance comics, mm -hmm. and then Ditko was like, "Peace, I'm out. I'm sick of you, Stanley." <laughs> <laughs> and okay, and Stanley was like, "John Romita wants John Romita wants you come over here and do Spider-Man with me." And he brought that romance comic style mm. to Spider-Man, uh -huh. and it was, I mean, it was an abrupt shift. Because, sure. like, Steve Dicko's stuff is really, uh, 
eccentric in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, and yeah, Ramita's was so refined and so such a romance comic style. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that ultimately, because of that, that's where you really get the you know the Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy love triangle mm -hmm. stuff, and like you know all those classic like mm -hmm. you know romance comic tropes that really did fit for John Ramita Sr. So right. uh, yeah, definitely would be missed. But I mean. 93, that's a, that's a, like I said, that's a hell of a run. <laughs> <laughs> that is a and to be remembered for redefining Spider-Man and yeah. also defining Spider-Man for people, not just for a generation, just period. Yeah. That's a big deal. So I'm all for it. And also creating Wolverine and the Punisher. And I think nuts. one of the most uh, notable stories that he did, maybe arguably, is the night when Stacy died. Yes, actually, you're right. I totally glossed over that, but you're so correct. So, like, yeah, he's got a lot, of, he's got a bunch of classics under his belt, and he created some of the most mm -hmm. impressive characters uh, in the Marvel Universe, so there you go, John Romita Jr. John Romita Senior. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I do want to point out that we did do an interview with John Romita Jr. Like about yeah. 2019, I want to say 2018. It was about, yeah, I believe it was 2019. Okay, and um, you know, of course, he talked about his dad um, pretty yeah. extensively. He talked a lot about like you know being the uh, being the son of someone who was already a legend in the field mm -hmm. and coming into the business, and his dad was like, "You got to do this on your own." Yeah, like you know, he's like, I'll, he's like, I'll give you advice because he is art director in Marvel, right? Yeah. So like, I'm not, but I'm not gonna, but that's my job. So I'm not gonna be treating you any different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But you got to make your bones on your own. So if you get a chance, uh, definitely check that out because it was just really nice to literally sit across from John Romita Jr. and hear him talk about his dad. Yeah. Like he was oh. like, he was like, you know, I mean, that's comic book royalty right there. Yeah. Point, you know. So, um. All right, let's break into the comics broke me mm. topic, right? Yeah. Because this has got some layers to it. Uh, I don't know. Did we discuss who was going to tackle this? No. Okay. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. So, um, long story short, uh, Ian McGinty. I don't know if you got a picture of Ian McGinty, John. If you can, uh, you can pull it up, please. Um, Ian McGinty passed away, um, and the belief was that, and there's been like some conflicting statements about it. But mm -hmm. long story short, you know, when you're a freelancer in this industry, you do not get um, health care, health care by default by the companies mm -hmm. you're working for, right? You have to do it, you have to do it, uh, uh, you're a freelancer, so therefore you have to go get, you know, your health insurance yourself. Um, and from the understanding, from my understanding of basically based on the conversations online, um, uh, he was unable to care for himself because of uh, being a freelancer, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a risk that a lot of creators take, right? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I make comics, and one of the reasons I chose to work at Diamond was because I did not want to deal with that. Yeah. Um, but it is a reality, and we've heard this story a million times. We've heard this with Jack Kirby and his health. Uh, we've heard this with so many other people in the past. Uh, and it's really unfortunate because, yeah. you know, on one spectrum you have this culture that is like all about the characters, all about the characters. And on the flip side, you have a lot